A question that I receive often working in a secondary school in Texas as an athletic trainer is what can I do to help prevent cramping? More specifically, what can I drink to help prevent cramping? It is common that we would have athletes who are experiencing cramping either before, during, or after workouts or competitions, um, have them drink water or Gatorade, stretch and roll out with a foam roller. So muscle cramping can be a very common occurrence either before, during, or after games or sporting events. So before talking about how to prevent cramping, it is important to know how and why it occurs. There are a few intrinsic and extrinsic risk, risk factors that Schwellness, Drew, and Collins in 2008 stated in a study. A few of those risk factors that are intrinsic include dehydration, muscle fatigue, increased intensity of exercise, increased age, increased concentration of sweat, and daily shorter stretching time. Schwellness and colleagues also stated that one of the only external risk factors is increased temperature and or humidity. This risk factor is unfortunately very common um, down here, especially in the summer months and in those late spring and early um, fall months. So in a study by Jung, Bishop, Al Nawas, and Dale in 2005, they looked at exercise-associated muscle cramps. There were two groups that were looked at in the study, the hypohydration group and the carbohydrate electrolyte group. The hypohydration group was not able to drink liquid while working out, while the carbohydrate and electrolyte group drank a beverage that contained carbohydrates, potassium, sodium, and chloride. In the same study by Jung and colleagues, they found that those who had a higher sweat rate experienced cramps compared to those who had a lower sweat, weight, sweat rate and did not experience cramps. This leads to the thought that dehydration and or electrolyte imbalance can cause exercise-associated muscle cramps. Furthermore, this study states that since both electrolytes and fluid were provided together, it is hard to know which could have a greater impact on exercise-associated muscle cramping. Jung and colleagues stated that the intensity one exercises at can also affect whether a carbohydrate electrolyte beverage could help reduce the occurrence of exercise-associated muscle cramps. But this is a limitation in this study, so future research would need to be completed to see where the threshold lies in terms of exercise intensity. Muscle fatigue also plays a part in exercise-associated cramping. Um, so once an athlete's body hits their own threshold, as that it will be different for each person, um, once they hit that threshold for intensity and or muscular fatigue, electrolyte supplementation may not be possible to help in prevention of exercise-associated muscle cramping. So in conclusion, Jung and colleagues presumed that a carbohydrate electrolyte beverage can help in the prevention of exercise-associated muscle cramps, um, whereas in higher intensity exercise where sweat production is greater than fluid and electrolyte absorption, a carbohydrate electrolyte beverage could delay the onset of cramping, but it is very unlikely it could prevent cramps. But more research will need to be done as 69% of the participants in this study still experienced exercise-associated muscle cramping, even when they were taking in the electrolyte supplementation and hydrating at the same time. So this proves that there are could be more causes to exercise-associated cramping than just the normal thoughts of dehydration and a loss of electrolytes. Therefore, in another study by Miller, Stone, Huxel, and Edwards in 2010, they looked at the causes, treatment, and prevention of exercise-associated muscle cramps. They suggested that drinking a liter of water or a sports drink one hour before exercise would allow the body enough time to absorb the fluid um, and allow the fluids to be available for a workout practice or competition. It has been thought that stretching can help to either prevent or treat exercise-associated muscle cramping. This can include stretches of both the upper and lower extremity. In another study by Schwellness, Drew, and Collins in 2010, they looked at Ironman triathletes and exercise-associated muscle cramping. They found that there was no difference with the occurrence of exercise-associated muscle cramping in those who stretched more frequently and longer than those who stretched less frequently and for not as long. Casa et al. in 2015 stated that stretching can be used for a treatment instead of as prevention. They found that with exercise-associated muscle cramping associated with 
that muscle fatigue or overload, stretching can help relieve the athlete. Um, this has been proven um, even at the high school that I'm at in that we've had many athletes go down on the field before, especially for soccer, with calf cramps. Um, and we go out and help them stretch their calf and it very um, produces very well at um, relieving their cramping and the pain that they could be having. But there needs to be more research done about exercise associated muscle cramping and whether it can help in terms of prevention and not just treatment. Lastly, the study by McDermott et al. in 2017 stated that an athlete's diet should contain a good amount of sodium to help prevent that loss of sodium that happens through sweat while working out. Um, this could also help prevent um, exercise-associated muscle cramps. So although there is no concrete evidence that states which method would be best and if there is a method that is 100% effective at preventing exercise associated muscle cramping, um, the methods are worth a try. Um, each body is different um, and each body reacts, each athlete's body reacts differently to different methods. Um, so as stated, it's worth a try to see which one could help possibly prevent um, the cramps. So the external risk factor um, of increased temperature and or humidity is not a factor that can be changed, unfortunately, but the internal risk factor of dehydration can be changed. So in order to reduce the risk of having exercise associated muscle cramping, one should be drinking fluids throughout the day, both water and a sports drink like Gatorade or Powerade uh, that contains sodium. It is important to drink an adequate amount of fluid an hour before practice uh, for workout or competition and if there is any sodium loss during practice or competition, small volumes of salty fluids can be consumed to help offset the sodium that is lost. For example, Casa um, et al. in 2015 um, stated that pickle juice can be consumed at a ratio of one milliliter per one kilogram of body weight. So for the first two days of fall football camp, uh, we, me and the other athletic trainers, uh, keep track of each athlete's food loss by having weigh-ins and weigh-outs. Um, and this is a great way of showing the athlete how much fluid they have actually lost during practice, um, as most do not realize the amount that they can lose um, fluid-wise. And that way we can show them um, concrete evidence that states this is how much you've lost and this is how much um, would be best to drink. Um, and that way it helps them um, prepare um, and help prevent muscle cramping from occurring um, that next day and helps them take ownership of it as well 